graduate from uh, strumming your tennis racket in front of your parents' dressing table mirror to sort of asking your dad if he can get you a guitar, which he did for two pounds, what would have been two pounds fifty in today's money. And, um, and then I started playing it um, upside down because I'm left-handed, but I did, that didn't occur to me. I just picked the guitar up and thought, well, uh, it's upside down. I'll just turn it over. Oh, that's all right. So I play right-handed, even though I'm left-handed, uh, as you can see by the uh, drink. And then I started strumming along with the Beatles songs um, and sort of found that the chords weren't that difficult. And then uh, started writing a couple of very basic two chord ditties and then tried to form a band in the village hall as you do. Then you get your first electric guitar, Burns Trisonic, seven pounds. Thought it was the bee's knees until my mate turned up with a Fender Telecaster. And then I realized the Burns Trisonic was but a toy. He was a, a chap from of ethnic origins called Barry Mohammed. And I don't know if his family had some money that our family didn't have, but he just turned up one day with his beautiful white telly with a maple neck. And then I was smitten, so my dad uh, bought me or lent me the money to buy uh, a Fender Stratocaster, which was advertised in the local evening paper. So I got the Stratocaster, then the local band called Toby Twirl were disbanding. And uh, the guitarist had a Marshall to sell, and again went to Dad's bank, got the Marshall, and then took it from there. Formed a, a progressive rock band called Kestrel, which uh, an old friend of ours, John Worth, ended up producing. Yeah, I mean, you're more concerned with getting your first Gibson Les Paul and your Marshall stack and your distortion pedal and your echo unit and t how did Jimi Hendrix do that you know how did he get that sound on all along the watchtower what's going on there you know what's a bottleneck yeah girls were in the equation of course absolutely but then after all the local bands you get to go and see your first proper band at Newcastle City Hall or Newcastle Mayfair and you um, you discover the, a, a, a different level and there we would see Led Zeppelin Jethro Tull and um, bands of that era, Bloodwind Pig, the Emerson, Lake and Palmer, Deep Purple. Um, the first big gig, uh, big gig Kestrel ever did was um, at one of the, uh, the universities in Durham. Um, and we got a call from the social secretary saying uh, a band had dropped out and he was looking for somebody to come and support a group called Wishbone Ash. And we thought, right, there, we knew they were on the up and up. So of course, we all turned up in the afternoon, got our gear set up, and um, we thought, we'll show these cockney dandy boys what us Geordie lads can do. And of course, needless to say, we were atrocious, and they were absolutely on a different level altogether. Big lesson learnt that day. We've got a long way to go, boys. Because um, we were boys and they were men. And Wishbone Ash were a revelation.